Project 12 is a network of passionate, creative leaders from many backgrounds that have come together to identify, create, and promote effective ministries with men. On behalf of the ministries involved with Project 12, welcome to this Epiphany Worship. As we join the wise men, may we remember our call to adoration and service. Please join me in a word of prayer. Lord God, on this day you revealed your Son to the nations by the leading of a star. Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives and bring us at last to the full vision of your glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Child, is this too late to rest on Mary's lap? Is sleeping? Whom angels greet with anthems sweet, while shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ the King. Shepherds, God, and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Such a mean a stay where rocks and ass are feeding. Good Christians fear for sinners hear the silent word is pleading. Nail spears shall pierce him through the cross. Be Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For the darkness shall cover the earth, and the thick darkness of the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, 
and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather today. They come to you. Your son shall come from far away, and your young daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 through 12, Paul's ministry to the Gentiles. For this is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, through this mystery, was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gifts of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So that through the church, the wisdom of God in his rich variety might now be known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. Listen to this story from Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born the king of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together the, all the chief priests and the scribes of all the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. And they, they told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for it is written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. And when they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream, not to return to Herod. They left for their own country by another road. This is the story of God for the people of God. Greetings and grace from your siblings in Christ in the United Methodist Church. A couple of weeks ago, I was asked by a friend and fellow seminarian if I'd be willing to preach, uh, preach a brief homily on one of the four themes of Christmas. I was lucky to be asked by, uh, by that seminary, my good friend Kevin. And one of the themes that I chose was the theme of joy. To illustrate this, we jump now from Christmas Day, just a little bit to pick up on something that Matthew tells us in his gospel. Turn with me, if you will, to Matthew chapter two. 
Starting in verse 9, this version comes from the New English translation. After listening to the king, they, they being the Magi, or the wise men, and the king being Herod, left at once. Again, they saw the star when it rose, and it led them until it stopped above the place where the child lay. When they saw the star, they shouted joyfully. As they came into the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother, they bowed down and they worshipped him. They opened their treasures and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This is the word of God for the people of God. I want to quickly point out three thoughts, if I can. Three observations. Because we were taught in my seminary school to use three as often as we can. Joy. Joy to the Magi was preceded by anticipation. The Magi had not yet seen Jesus, but their joy was already so great, just in anticipating the meeting that would come, that it could not be contained. For Matthew's Gospel tells us they shouted joyfully. The Greek translation there literally means they shouted with great and abundant joy. You know, I'm sure that you've seen this play out in your lives, whether you remember it as a child or even as a parent. There's something extraordinary about the joy of a child on Christmas morning. Not one single gift has been opened, but the joy that the children feel is actively palpable. That's why they rush in on Christmas morning to wake their parents, who were probably up far too late the night before. It's their anticipation that fuels and fires their joy. I pose to you, my siblings in Christ, that that's how it should be with us. Whether it's the joy of Christmas or the joy of living a dedicated life as a disciple of Jesus the Christ. You know, my challenge to us as a family of faith is to be little Christ. And that our joy always be preceded by our anticipation of God's will for us. Did you see the next thing that happened in Matthew's Gospel? After they shouted joyfully, they bowed down and they worshiped Jesus. In the hustle and the bustle and the busyness of Christmas time, it's easy to forget that this entire shindig is actually not about us at all. It's not about the gifts. It's not about the family. It's not about trees, ornaments, lights, snowflakes. No. Christmas is about the day that we have as a family of Christ. Chosen to sit aside, to remember that the sovereign God of the universe decided to give up infinity, to contain the Creator in a single cell that was implanted in the womb of a young, unmarried Jewish girl. All too often we're overcome with joy and we forget to stop and worship. I get it. We're all busy as completely human to be wrapped up into our own emotions. My challenge for us is that this Christmas, we remember that while we're experiencing the height of our own joy, that we pause, contemplate, meditate, and silently sometimes worship the King of Kings. Finally, joy involves sacrifice. You know, first joy is preceded by anticipation, and then it's followed by worship. The third thing that I want us to remember is that out of joy, our natural reaction should be to sacrifice. Listen again to what Matthew tells us. They opened their treasure boxes and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Think about it, if you will, historically in the context of the time. Three pagan astrologers travel across the known world. They cross desert, wilderness, hardship. They most likely had with them a caravan of camels, guards, support staff, advisors. And they were influential enough for one of the most narcissistic kings in Israel's history, Herod, to grant them an audience without hesitation. These were most likely powerful, very powerful men. But even in all of their power, they humbled themselves and they sacrificed to God, to a God whom they, they didn't even hold themselves accountable to. They gave gifts of what they considered to be extraordinary value, enough such that it's speculated that when the Holy Family went into exile in Egypt, most likely Jesus, Mary, and Joseph lived off of those gifts of gold. 
I ask you today as we contemplate this new year on Epiphany, when's the last time that you gave truly sacrificial? My challenge for us, my siblings in Christ, this Christmas and every Christmas together with every day is that we remember the joy the foundation of the kingdom of God is laid upon. And remember that in that joy, we are to love God by serving our neighbor and to thereby sacrifice ourselves the special gifts that God has imbued us each with. Three challenges. Three challenges this Christmas from the joy which followed the birth of Christ. Remember, let your joy be preceded by anticipation. Let your joy be followed up by worship and then let your response be sacrificial to that joy. Again, may the joy of this Christmas season and epiphany fill your spirits and warm your hearts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
star with royal beauty bright West leading still proceeding Guide us to thy perfect light Like all who seek real joy in these tying times, we come to you faithfully trusting in your tender mercies. You have given us the gift of the church. Help all of us to be faithful to your gospel, that we might reflect your light of love wherever we may be. Open our hearts to welcome everyone just as they are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are surrounded by news that seems to suck the joy right out of us. Guide those who work for peace in all areas of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pave the way for those who work tirelessly to turn weapons of destruction into tools of peace. Bless the work of law enforcement, the judicial system, prisoners, and others who work for justice in our nation. Grant peace to the families of those who have died in the line of duty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant the joy of healing to all who are ill and those who care for them. Give stamina to health care workers who are overwhelmed. Surround families who are not allowed to visit their loved ones. Bless chaplains who serve as your presence in troubling situations. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who have gone before us and who now rest from their labors. May their memories give us joy as we trust in the promise of new life in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your light shine in our darkness and be a beacon of hope as we follow the star. We pray in the name of the Savior of the world. Amen. Let us pray. God of all creation, you are here with us in the world, in the flesh. Open our eyes to see you, our hearts to trust you, and our hands to hold you, and those you call us to serve, that beholding your glory, we would be transformed through your ever-present love given to us in Jesus, our brother, in whose name we pray. Amen. May God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, dwell in you richly, and lead you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Christ's body groaning, suffers tribulation, longs for God's justice, global transformation, praise for the light, amen, praise for the light.